In today's video, we're going to unbox a living legend, one of the best-selling pistols, most popular pistols in the world. Today we present the Glock 19 Gen 3. It speaks for itself. We've noticed a large percentage of our viewers have not subscribed, so if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. My name is Ed Thorell, and we want to thank all of our subscribers for tuning in, giving us an attraction. And if you haven't done it already, be sure to hit the like, the share, and subscribe so you'll never miss an, an, any episode. And today we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the, the Gen 3 Glock 19, which is literally a legend in its own time. And I could not find an accurate number of how many have been sold, but let's just say millions, and we won't be too far off. And the world changed in 1982 when the Austrian army uh, went out looking for a new pistol. And a gentleman by the name of Gaston Glock, who had already started a business dealing with uh, polymers, uh, decided that he wanted to get in on this also. And with no training as a uh, gun designer, he brought together a team and came out with the Model 17. And for those of you that know the story about Glock, they had 16 patents prior, and 17 was the very first firearm that they developed and got their patent for. So the Glock 17 is their very first design, and the Glock 17 changed the world. And in a matter of three months, they were able to put together a working design that would end up changing the world. Now, even though they were not the very first polymer pistol, uh, they were really the first polymer pistol that really took off in terms of mass appeal and mass production. And what that did was it helped bring down quite a few of the costs. So Glock started off with the 17, which has been adopted by over 45 countries, uh, 2,000 law enforcement agencies, and they're everywhere. They're iconic. Uh, you see them in the movies, TVs, rap videos, the Glock is everywhere. Now, the Model 19 that we happen to have today is basically a compact version of the Model 17. And it's about a half inch shorter in the grip, and it's about a half inch shorter in the overall length. So it fits into the genre of a compact pistol. It's also a 9mm. Now, um, this would be the third generation. The first generation didn't have serial numbers. The, the second generation did. The second generation also did not have the finger grooves, which the third generation does. And some people really like the finger grooves for having a positive grip. One of the other things that sets the, the Gen 3 apart is there's an extra pin that goes through the action. And they're the first ones that, uh, that, that got that extra pin. They also come with a thumb rest on both sides. And uh, one of the things that uh, really sets the, the Gen 3 apart from earlier ones is the fact that it comes with a universal rail. And that universal rail allows for the placement of different types of accessories, whether it might be something like a laser or something that might be a tactical light, but it became a, uh, a universal on, on all Glocks moving forward. Now, it also had a modified extractor, and one of the things that you get with this extractor is it has a claw, and this little piece right here below actually acts as a loaded round indicator. When there is a round in the chamber, this little piece right here is going to stick out. So that little square is going to stick out so that in the middle of the night, you can run your thumb over it and be able to tell um, exactly what the condition of the pistol is and whether or not it's got a round in the chamber, which is pretty handy. Now, you can also get the Gen 3 in different colors. Black is the most popular, but you can also get it in olive drab and flat dark earth. They are out there. Now, like I said, it's, it's really hard to pin down a number on how many of these have been produced and sold. Um, I've seen a lot of things on the forums, and the one thing you can be sure about the internet is if it's on the internet, it must be true. 
um, and and I couldn't find any straight numbers. But all I can tell you is they they basically own a huge percentage of the market share for um, pistols sold on the market. And Glock pretty much dominates not just the American market, but the world market as well. And it's become iconic as a result. Now, in California, um, we are basically restricted to 10 round magazines. And the Glock comes with two of those. It also comes with its own loader, which I'm not a big fan of. Some people really like them, but this is what the gun comes with. So, just like we always do, I'm gonna drop the mag and show safe and clear, which is the way it comes from the factory. So we can have a nice little conversation. So, you're also, with the Glock, um, you're going to get this nice orange cable lock, and this is something that's required in the state of California. You're also going to get a cleaning brush and I believe hidden in here somewhere also, they give you all of the various uh, um, paperwork that goes along with it, which is kind of nice. Um, not that I always read the paperwork, but it's important that before you uh, actually operate it, go through and, and, and actually read the manual. There might be some stuff in there that surprises you. So that being said, the Glock really has taken over the market and when they set out to design it, they wanted to come up with the easiest pistol in the world to use that required the fewest amount of hours training. So it is a very simple pistol to use and it has the fewest amount of controls for simplicity. Now, for example, it has its magazine release over here, as well as the, uh, the slide lock. So to activate this, you know, you would push up on it to lock the slide back. And Glock prefers that instead of you using this as a slide release, you would basically pull the slide back and let it slam forward, which means you're gonna have less internal wear by not overusing this. Now, it also comes with Glock's brands of sights that a lot of people are critical of, and it's one of the first things that they change. But today we've got a brand new stock Gen 3, and we're just gonna run it stock out of the box without anything added to it. So what you're gonna wanna do with this type of sight is you're gonna wanna make sure that you align your sights by making sure that this white dot fits evenly inside the rear sight and so that they are level all the way across the top. Equal height, equal light. So if you have this in here, you should see a little sliver of light on either side. And this is what's known as a cover hold, meaning you're gonna put this white dot right exactly where you want the bullet to go. So that white dot is gonna be your point of impact and what you see is what you get. Now, it's worth noting that not just the Glock, but many pistols that come from the factory dry. And I recommend to everybody, when you first get your gun, you wanna make sure and check out that it's lubed. And Glocks in particular are known for wanting to be run a little bit on the dry side. And that's because these were designed for operating in Northern Europe, and in the area like of the Austrian Alps, where it can get very cold. And too much oil, too much liquid could freeze. So the way they designed it was to use less oil. And I wanna show you real quickly how we're gonna take this apart. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to it and, and work it up a little bit in preparation for getting it started. So to get these things apart, you're gonna start by grabbing it at the rear and pulling this back a little bit to take it out of battery. This part right here is what's uh, is, is going to be the spring-loaded pin that you're going to depress in each direction, and there's one on each side. So you're gonna pull this back a little bit and hold it and let it go forward, pull the trigger, and the slide comes right off. That's it. 
to remove the barrel for cleaning, you're going to take the slide out and the barrel comes right out. And you can see there's very little oil here. This is not lubricated at all, very, very slightly. And, and what I like to do is, is um, especially with a new pistol, is I like to make sure it's got some oil on it so it breaks in real nice. And, and um, what I like to do is I like to just put just a little drop of this so it goes all around the barrel so that as it goes through that bearing surface at the front of the slide, it's nice and clean and smooth and you get a nice even wear surface as you break it in. Um, keep in mind that every gun is going to take a little while to break in. I estimate say 500 rounds and in that time you're going to see all of the uh, the springs soften up. They're going to settle and the gun will sweeten up over time um, once all the springs have a chance to settle in. Now you're going to replace and, and put the, the spring in, and it only goes in in one direction. If you see this little nipple here on one side and it's flat on the back, the flat is going to go into that little half moon shape right there, which is going to retain it in place. So not much to it, you're just going to press this in, and it goes into place, just like that. Not much to it. Now, I recommend not over-oiling a Glock because they do like to run a little bit on the dry side. So I'm going to put a, just a little drop of oil right there on, on those, which are the, you know, the, the guides. And these are actually molded into the frame you know, during the uh, uh, production of it. And I'm just going to put a little bit here in the action as well. You know? um, and that's really about all it really needs. Now you can see tutorials on YouTube that are going to give you much more better specifics on, on how and where um, you should oil it. But we're just giving you a basic idea today. And same thing, make sure that there's no dust or dirt in there. Line it all up. Line up your slides. Nice and easy. Of course, everything's new when it's tight. Okay. And, and what I like to do, and, and some people may think it's necessary, some people it's not, I just like to work the action a little bit. I want to get that oil to kind of flow around on, the, uh, on all those bearing surfaces, make sure it's got a nice even coat so that when we do get started shooting it, it's, it's a little bit more ready to go. Now, no one's going to say that we're the very first Glock uh, video out there, but I still want to point out a few different types of features and and one of them right here is the safety. The safety is actually built into the trigger and you can see it right there. It's that little spur right there. And that spur has to be depressed in order for the trigger to be activated. If it doesn't, it's not going to be able to go all the way to the rear. So it is going to have to be depressed for the trigger to work just like that. All right, so those are the major controls. You have the slide lock, and you're gonna push up on this as you pull back, and it's gonna lock into place. All right, you're also going to, when you release it, don't necessarily push down on here, just pull back and let it go. And always let the, the force and the violence of the spring do the work. Do not ease it forward. You will induce a malfunction. You also have your magazine release, which is going to be low and behind your thumb. And when you push this in, you're going to see it's going to release that. And the magazine, when you do that, should just fall free. Okay. Um, the only other real controls that you have to think about are the trigger and the safety, and then also the, um, the disassembly pins that we showed again. So, of course, when the magazine is empty, it's going to lock home, indicating that the gun is hungry and wants to be fed some more. And um, 
that's about it. Now, one of the things I wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about is the fact in California, um, the only Glock 19 that is available on the civilian market would be the Gen 3. So this is your big choice in California. However, there's really only two 19s, well, three actually, the 19X. This would be the Gen 5, which if you've been watching the show, this is no stranger. My Gen 5 was purchased used, which is something that you can do in California. If it comes in legal to the state and was purchased new by like say a law enforcement officer, it's legal to buy these things used. It's just a civilian cannot buy them new. Now, there's some slight differences when you go from the Gen 3 to the Gen 5, and one of the things that you'll notice is it also comes with the same type of accessory rail that you're gonna be able to mount a light or a laser to. Um, one of the things that you'll be able to see in terms of differences if you look at the Gen 3 versus the Gen 5 is the Gen 5, one of the things that it did is it contoured the front of the muzzle to make it easier to reholster. Now, another thing that you're going to notice is we flip these over in this direction is that you have on one side, you know, your, your um, slide lock, but with the Gen 5, you actually get them on both sides. It's ambidextrous, which is a really nice feature. Um, other things that, they're, that are different is the Gen 3 has the finger grooves, whereas the Gen 5 does not. And I actually prefer it better with the, my fit of my hand um, having, having uh, the lack of the grooves. Uh, one of the things that comes with the Gen 5 also as part of the kit is you, uh, it comes with four different uh, beaver tails which you can choose from to see which one fits your hand best. Now, one of the things you can do is you can add an aftermarket beaver tail just by pushing out this particular pin right here. And the beaver tails will come with a secondary pin which you're going to fill up the space since you're putting something wider on it. Um, and another thing to take a look at is with the magazine well of the Gen 3, it has one cutout in the back which is for stripping the magazine. You can get in here and grab it because of that cutout if for some reason it jams up. What the Gen 5 does is it actually gives you a cutout at the front and the back so that if for some reason your magazine jams up, you can actually grab it from both sides. Um, some people don't care for that, but the Glocks evolve. One of the things that you'll also notice between the Gen 5 and the Gen 3 is the Gen 3 is going to come with a single spring recoil system, whereas the Gen 5 is going to have a dual spring, a spring within a spring. And you're also going to find that there are going to be some differences internally. Um, there's slightly different types of rifling in, inside the barrel. Uh, you're going to notice that the trigger systems are slightly different, but um, I tell people if you're just getting into pistols and you're looking for a great everyday pistol that's going to be easy to train with, it's really hard to beat the Glock. Um, and I prefer the Model 19 for its size over the full size of the 17, but either, either one's going to be a great choice. And the numbers alone uh, are going to justify that the Glock is a winner. And, uh, you know, you can't argue with the sales numbers. So, um, what we're going to do here in just a minute, uh, we're going to load this up, we're going to come right back, and we're going to put some rounds through a brand new stock Gen 3 Glock, just so you can see how it shoots right out of the box. All right, well, we're going to run a couple of 10-round mags through this, and let's see if I can get a tune out of this trombone.
that sucked. Better. I've never been a big fan of the stock lock sights and it shows. I find myself chasing the ball and I much more prefer a three dot sight. And for my purposes, with my Gen 5, I went out and bought my Trigicons. I had them ordered and they were ready to stall as soon as I picked up the pistol. All right, that's 10. Not terribly impressive. All right, but not impressive. Okay, here goes another 10. Keep in mind that the triggers on these are incredibly stiff. And you've really got to focus on how your finger feels on the trigger and not jerk it and just feel it. And just like everybody else, it's a righty. We have a tendency to pull low and to the left. With a new gun, with a new trigger. That's really common. All right, we're safe, we're clear. Let's go walk up and take a look. All right, well, I was consistent, slightly low and to the left, and that's to be expected from a righty. You know, the general rule is, is for something like this, I'm squeezing as well as pulling. So you're gonna have your wrist and your hand moving to the left as well as down. That's pretty expected. Uh, with a brand new pistol where everything is super tight, I'm not terribly surprised. Um, I was able to put one right in the center that actually might be two, that looks like a keyhole. But you know, with a new gun, they're gonna take a while to break in. And more importantly, it's gonna take a while to break in the new shooter to really get a feel for the trigger. And that's only accomplished over time. Now, the trigger spring is gonna loosen up, it's gonna sweeten up, um, and you get to know your trigger, you'll be able to do a lot better. So most of this is a matter of uh, um, you know, managing the trigger or not managing it as well as I wanted to. It's, it's easy to be spoiled on my Gen 5 because it's got a really sweet trigger and it's more than broken in right now. But overall, for a brand new Glock right out of the box with sights I don't care for, it's all right. I like the gun. Um, it's, it's a good addition. And I think that those that are out there looking for something that's easy, safe, and uh, pretty intuitive to use, it's a great choice. So anyway, on behalf of Shooter the Series, I'm Ed Thorell. We wanna thank you all for sticking with us. Y'all take care.